Well, a lot of fans have their eyes on this featherweight fight between unbeatens. Here it is, Brian T. City Ortega, number eight in the world, 26 years old, the Brazilian. And Otto Moicano, number nine in the world, is 28. Moicano, three inches taller. He will have a three-inch reach advantage. All right, now for the introductions. Back inside the octagon to Bruce Buck. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC featherweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a jiu-jitsu fighter holding an undefeated professional record, 11 wins, no losses, one draw. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall, weighing in at 146 pounds, fighting out of Brasilia, Brazil, presenting the number nine ranked featherweight contender in the world, Anato! And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, a mixed martial artist holding an undefeated professional record, 11 wins, no losses, one no contest, he stands 5 feet 8 inches tall, weighing in at 146 pounds, fighting out of Los Angeles, California, presenting the number 8 ranked featherweight contender in the world, Brian T. Jason Herzog. Jason Herzog in there for this featherweight tilt. Ariani Celeste is here. Thank you, Ariani. We are ready to go here with Hanato Moicano and Brian T. City Ortega. Ortega telling me he feels like his fight IQ is the biggest improvement he's made dating to his UFC debut. And we've really seen him get more polished with his finishing skills. Knockouts in two of his last three. He is also the only fighter in UFC history with three consecutive third-round finishes, so some of them of the more attritive variety. But Ortega returning from a layoff of more than a year here tonight. He's in blue, Hanato Moicano in black. I really want to see what happens when this fight goes to the later rounds. Uh, Ortega was the last one to weigh in. He came in almost two minutes before the weigh-in deadline. So was that a hard cut, or was he just waiting to weigh in? We're not sure, but that type of stuff usually plays dividends in the third round. Let's see here. If exhaustion sets in because of the weight cut, we don't know. Moicano always has a lot of wins by decision. He's very sharp with his game plan and how he chooses to throw and approach fights. And Moicano is coming off a huge victory with Jeremy Stevens. I mean, uh, Jeremy Stevens is one of the most dangerous featherweights in the world. And a, a victory over him is absolutely gigantic for this young man's career. And Brian Ortega, as we were saying before the break, or during the break, Brian Ortega might have some of the best Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in this division, particularly off of his back. He's sensational. Can't wait till the fight goes there. He's clipped him with the right hand. Ortega clipped Moicano. He caught him with the left. This is a completely different style fight that we saw with Moicano versus Jeremy Stevens. He was backing up the whole fight, pulling Jeremy to him. In this fight, we're seeing him stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ortega. And that just shows that Moicano's able to adapt to each opponent differently. He doesn't fight everybody the same. It has to be that way if you're going to be in the top five of the division. You have to change according to each person you fight. Well, the thing about Ortega is so many people think about his jiu-jitsu, you forget that his striking is very clean and getting better all the time. He's a 26-year-old, started his UFC career at 23, and you're just seeing improvement from this young man all the time. Well, what I love about that, Joe, the re a big reason his striking can be so effective is because look how, how he can press forward. Right. He presses forward because he has no worry of takedowns. Right. A lot of us MMA fighters have to worry about the takedown for points. Ortega does not care, so he can throw with reckless abandonment without thinking of takedowns. Yeah, uh, we've got an eye poke here. Yeah, he can stand up straight and not worry right. about it and actually encourage yeah. a fighter to take him down. And throw more power because throwing power generally telegraphs punches okay? and allows the takedown. He doesn't care. Similar to what we see out of Jacare. Just throw everything he has in all his punches. And Ortega is very unique in his jiu-jitsu that he is a specialist off his back. Maybe one of the best guys in MMA today off his back. Just ate a kick to the jaw real quick though from Moicano. You don't want either of these guys on your back. And Anto Moicano, five career wins by submission. All of them by rear naked choke. And for Ortega, we're seeing the development, as Joe mentioned, in his striking. He spent much of the last year rehabbing a shoulder injury. Last UFC fight, the knockout of Clay Guida at UFC 199, also in SoCal, June of 2016.
look how close these guys are. They're right face to face, touching each other's hands. It's like a Muay Thai battle with four ounce gloves on. Hard leg kick there by Ortega. Caught. There's that flexibility you were talking about, Joe. I mean, look, that, most people are down after you catch a kick like that. Good kick to the body by Moicano. Everything Moicano's throwing with fight ending intentions. Counter there is good from Ortega. 90 seconds to go, round one. Ortega looking nice and loose in there. I like what I'm seeing. Well, he's moving his trunk so well. Look how close these guys are. Moicano can't find his head because Ortega's moving his trunk so well. His feet stay still, but his trunk moves, which allows the counter for Ortega. Ortega said he had a lot of respect for Moicano's ability to find ways to win throughout his career, but he said as humbly as he could, he feels like he's better everywhere. And Moicano with a nice counter right there. Ooh, Moicano caught him there with that right hand. You never see MMA fights this close together. I mean, nowadays these fights are much farther apart, and these guys are right in the pocket of each other just training. Yeah, and it's largely a boxing match here. Ooh. Moicano over the top. Nice jab by Moicano. Under 30 seconds to go in the round. He has landed that right hand over the top repeatedly on Ortega in this first round. T City now closing the distance. The nose of Moicano is a mess. I would bet Moicano's nose is broken. Okay, let's read. We're going to have to put, put press hard in the second round now, man. You won the round. You got, you got it. He, he, he got the harder shots than you. Because you have to put your speed to play. Put the first hand to get there, come to the right, and keep on with the straight. But you have to vary. He's not, he's not, he doesn't want to be in the pocket with you. When he starts to get, when he starts to get comfortable in the pocket right there, so we go do for a little takedown. That little high crotch you join me every single time. Dump him, boom! As he gets back up, we take the net. Look great, champ. Sure. Look great, Brian. Look great. This Wednesday, soccer's best. Step into the primetime spotlight on FS1 as the MLS All-Stars take on Real Madrid live from Chicago Soldier Field. It's the MLS All-Star game Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern on FS1. All right, second round here, Brian Ortega in blue, and Otto Moicano is in black. You heard Henner Gracie Joe in the corner of Brian Ortega, pretty pointed advice, and, and maybe looking for him to go for the takedown here or something. Yeah, I mean, the first fight, the first round, rather, was essentially a boxing match with a few kicks mixed in, and Ortega did really well in that, and you saw the bloodiness all over the face of Moicano. Ooh, nice head kick there by Moicano. <laughs> just just that, caught him at the end. Don't forget, when those land that close, they're able to land later on in the rounds the most. I mean, they're just touching Ortega, but that's the second one to land on Ortega's, Ortega's chin. He needs to keep his hands up on that right side, left side, excuse me. A nice leg kick there by Moicano, and he caught him with the left hook as he's moving in as well. They feel that Ortega will have a significant advantage on the ground. Oof, nice hand Moicano, work. yeah, loosening up here in the second. Going high-low with his combinations is key for Moicano. Very nice. Jab, right hand to the body, left hook to the head. Mm, right hand over the top. He's making some good adjustments in the second round. I just like some more kicks from Moicano. Inside, outside kicks to kind of switch up the reads of Ortega. And from Ortega, I would like to see him attempt to get this fight to the ground. Also, look at the way Moicano kind of stares in the mirror is what we call it, where you just kind of look at your opponent. Oh, good combination. Beautiful combination ended by that kick to the body. He poked him again, apparently. 
Jason Herzog didn't see it. Fighters can't call timeout, so we trudge onward. Stiff jab there from Brian Ortega, but Moicano with this output, he can keep up the space over, over 15 hard minutes. He's really loading up on his shots here. Nice jab. Ooh. Oh, man. Beautiful. Oh, and watch that kick again. Yep, that high kick is landing, and, and Ortega's starting to lose focus. He gets hit, and he gets mad at himself instead of just staying on the fight. He needs to just focus, keep the forward pressure, rip the body of Moicano right now, because Moicano's countering him very well when he reaches for Moicano's head. So Ortega needs to go to the body to make an adjustment right now. Yeah, we're seeing a much more effective Renato Moicano in this second round. Really made some good adjustments. Moicano's landed 47 head strikes already. And Ortega seems largely unfazed as he presses forward. Two and a half now to go in round two. And this is what I mean. Look at Moicano kind of sitting there staring. You see, feints really do dividend, dividends for Brian Ortega here. If he would switch and fake a little bit. When you see Moicano looking to land the power in the counters. And he looked to fake a takedown there and go for a spinning elbow. Again, the total starting to pile up for Hinato Moicano. This is just the numbers for round two. Another beautiful right hand over the top of the Brazil. Yeah, far better round for Moicano. I mean, we're really seeing what he's capable of here in the second. And this is the Moicano that we saw against Jeremy Stevens. Actually, against Jeremy Stevens, he moved far more. He was never training with Jeremy Stevens. If he did, Jeremy would have been happier, I think. The fact that Moicano is sitting in the center with Ortega here is because Moicano believes that he has more power than Ortega. When it came to Stevens, he wanted to back up and pull Stevens to and get Jeremy to chase him. He's fighting completely different, and it's actually working very well for him against Ortega right now, standing in the pocket. Ortega right here. Right. I agree with you tactically. What I meant was just the effectiveness. Beautiful jab there by Moicano as well. But Ortega now having some success with that right hand that landed. I want to see him close his distance more and at least make an attempt as his corner was requesting to get this takedown. Nice uppercut from T City. He's got an outstanding gas tank in his own right. He's gone five rounds twice, won both of those fights. Nice left the body. Oh man. Wow. These guys are trading in the center. They're both exchanging. They're giving each other turns on who's going to be offensive. All right, my turn. All right, your turn. All right, my turn. And they're just winging them in the telephone booth right now. And their knees are almost touching. Their feet are almost touching. Their heads are almost touching. It's a different range these two are fighting right now. All boxing. And very little leg kicks. Well, Moicano has landed more, but his face is busted up here towards the tail end of round two. The forward pressure of Ortega is what's giving Moicano some issues, and very nice there it lead. There's the takedown. I mean, Joe, you said when Moicano walked, he really mixes it up well, can do it all, and a timely takedown for the Brazilian here at the end of round two. Round three coming up. Oh, my finger. Muito bom, Renato. Senta aqui e respira. Sit down, yes. free. Come on. Very good. Ah, a toalha, Gabriel. Yes. Respira, Renato. Respira fundo. Então, Let's breathe. Tá? Tá Won this round. Tá now it's now we're tired. Respira. Calma. Ó, ganhou esse round. Tá um a um. Só que é o seguinte, o cara tá igualando no jogo But em pé. Mas ele conseguiu se equalizar se estando em pé. Tem que dar uma variada no jogo. Você tem que variar o que você está fazendo. Vamos kick mais. When he tries to hit you in the, in the chest, okay, let's try the knee. Listen, I know, I know, you haven't shot yet. You haven't even grabbed his legs once for you. I just need one. Okay, I put him on his ass one time. If he builds it back up, then we get back to the game plan. But when he's too comfortable in the pocket right there, you do your thing, okay? We need one right here. Okay, play, play half the round. Second half, we go for that takedown. I need at least one, Brian, before we go home. No, no, no. Well, Dana White's Tuesday Night Contender Series rolls on this Tuesday, August 1st. You can only see it on UFC Fight Pass. Rising stars featured in the iconic Tough Gym. We got the Snoop cast going on. And find out, most importantly, who Dana will pick to receive a UFC contract. The Contender Series live and streaming exclusively on Fight Pass Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Moicano is firing. <laughs> 
And Dom, after round two, they got the memo, more kicks desired out of the Brazilian more confident. Let's see if he listens. It would be, it's a great read to finish your combinations with kicks if you're more kind of beat the legs up like he's doing here. It'll give something different for Ortega to adjust to in this third round, which he hasn't seen yet. And in Ortega's corner, they were imploring beautiful leg kick again there by Marcano. In Ortega's corner, they were asking him to play for the beginning of the round and then go for that takedown. Henna Gracie pleading with him for that. Well, these guys can take a shot. Those leg kicks are going to start adding up with the forward pressure, but right now that nose of Moicano is just blown up right now. The body shots of Ortega are adding up. That's what you've got to do with somebody who's countering you. Whenever you throw at their head and they're countering you, you start ripping the body. It takes away their counters, and then their hands will start dropping over time. That's what we're seeing Ortega switch to the body. And he's doing a good job of moving around the guard of Moicano. As Moicano tries to protect himself, the body's what he leaves exposed. And Moicano is doing the right thing, starting with the kicks. I'd like to see him finish his combinations with the kicks like his coaches want. I think that would play huge dividends for him. I think he's a little tired from the pressure of Ortega. Don't forget, the forward pressure of Ortega takes away the kicking opportunities from Moicano. He went for that fake takedown spinning elbow again. Is Moicano thinking like I landed almost 100 strikes to his head? Does he even swell? I mean, is there any frustration when you hit a guy with your best shots and he seems unfazed? Right now, if I'm Moicano, I'm thinking rip the body, beat up the legs because he doesn't care if he gets punched in the face. Right. That was a beautiful leg kick right there that he landed as Ortega was coming in. Caught him and he slid back. Under three minutes now to go, two undefeated, top ten featherweights here. Now Moicano appears to be picking his, spike, his spots here late in the fight. You see, Joe, how we see Ortega sit in the pocket and he just brings the hand up and covers his face up. Yeah, just goes straight up, elbows stay on the hips. And that's because he doesn't care about the takedown. Most guys have to move to keep the takedown opportunity from being there. That's why Ortega's able to sit in the pocket the way he is. Because he doesn't care if you shoot. But well, we've hit the halfway point. And it's Moicano looking to take Ortega down. But look at this. That's right into a guillotine. That's why he wants you to Not shoot. Not good. That's it. That's it. Two City. So the fight goes to the ground and Brian Ortega gets it done. Huge show of respect there. Brian Ortega, man, pick your poison, got to be careful. Well, that was why his corner was pleading with him to go to the ground. His jiu-jitsu is sensational. I mean, he just finished that fight in about five seconds. The moment he was taken down, he immediately secured that guillotine, locked it up tight. Ortega is the real deal, ladies and gentlemen. He really is. And a standing ovation here for the local Brian Ortega. Let's get to the move of the fight. Sponsored by Metro PCS. Follow at Metro PCS on Facebook Live and Periscope tonight and get hashtag closer than ever to UFC 214 on a network that's more reliable than ever, Joe. Crazy that this was Moicano's idea to take this jiu-jitsu black belt to the ground and immediately fell right into a trap and tapping instantly. That is just razor sharp technique by Brian Ortega. You see it here again, he gets that arm underneath your neck, you're Dunsville. He locks it up, tightens it down, perfect angle, clamps it, and instantly tapping out. And remember, that's what forward pressure does. It forces the takedowns, it forces the strikes out of your opponent because they want to relieve the pressure. Well, and it was Ortega's work on the feet that ultimately probably forced Moicano to want to shoot. Four consecutive third round finishes for T-City. The official decision is next.
The biggest fight in combat sports history between Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor is here. It all begins August 25th with the weigh-in live on FS1. Then August 26th, the action is on Fox. We'll host a special pre-fight show at 6 p.m., followed by a huge prelims card at 7. And, of course, after the super fight, do not miss the post-fight commentary and interviews on FS1. Great fight turned in by Hanato Moicano and Brian Ortega. Now Bruce Buffer to make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Jason Herzog has called a stop to this contest at two minutes, 59 seconds of round number three. Declaring the winner by submission due to a guillotine choke, Brian T. City Ortega! I'm here with the winner, Brian Ortega, continuing his undefeated record inside the octagon and showing some textbook Gracie Jiu Jitsu here tonight. I mean, the moment the fight was taken to the ground, you instantaneously locked up that guillotine. Did you know you had it right away? First off, I want to thank God because without him, I'm nothing, all right? Now, to answer the question, it was, uh, it was a hard fight, you know what I'm saying? But we drilled this, this camp specifically because we knew that he's a point fighter. And then near the end, they want to secure a takedown and win the round. So we figured, listen, when they, tie, when they try to do that, we're gonna submit this, we're gonna submit him with either a guillotine and a conda choke or a dart. So we had like two months of just bah, 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 drilling this. So the second I got here, it was already reflex. And Moicano is a very talented guy. You're talking about a guy who's undefeated as well, who's coming off a victory of Jeremy Stevens. This is a huge victory for you. Where do you feel this puts you in the division? Man, that's up to Ed, uh, sorry, that's up to uh, Dana White and Sean Shelby, you know. We're the only, we were the only two undefeated guys in the top 10, and now I'm the only one left. And uh, this game is to see who can take that O, all right? And I'm not cocky, I'm not calling anyone out, but it's uh, like Grandmaster Elio Gracie said, I go, I wonder if I'm gonna lose, I wonder how. And that's what I wanna learn, and that's what I want, the knowledge I wanna gain from this fighting here in front of all you guys who support us. I love you guys so much. Anaheim, this is my backyard. I love you guys. Thank Congratulations you. on an outstanding performance. Brian Ortega, ladies and gentlemen. So Dom T. City improves to 12-0 with arguably the biggest win of his career here tonight in Anaheim. And with an intense mindset. I mean, to say that I want to see what it is to make me lose, that's how you keep winning. That's the mentality because you're challenging yourself to just see the best of somebody.